really, really pleasure to introduce our second speaker. Uh, Tanya's love for sport and active living started at a very early age when she became very fond of galloping horses over brightly colored obstacles, shooting pistols, and sword fighting, and those are all rights, okay? Uh, she picked up running at the same time to relieve stress and found out that she quite enjoyed it. Uh, Tani's passion for an active lifestyle combined with her knack of calculus and chemistry, so unlike me at all, uh, made taking kinesiology and university a natural choice for her. University is also when Tanya learned firsthand that both fitness and nutrition are very important when it comes to health because she successfully managed to gain 15 pounds while riding her bicycle from Tofino to St. John's, Newfoundland, which she assures you was not muscle gain. So she learned firsthand that nutrition and exercise need to be balanced for it to work long term. Now, Tanya is a passionate fitness entrepreneur, a kinesiologist, a Rotarian, a fitness columnist, a wife, and an awesome mom. Uh, she's the owner of Ascend Fitness, a private personal training studio in Chilliwack, and the founder of a very awesome and brand new Fit and Vibrant You podcast, which is great. So make sure you go on iTunes after and check that out. Uh, Tanya and her team of expert fitness professionals work to aspire and educate others to make awesome changes in their lives. And her and her team have helped literally hundreds of people get the ball out in their life that they want. So it's absolute pleasure to introduce my good friend Tanya to the stage. Thank you. We've been sitting for a little bit of um, you know at least half an hour now. So before we get started, I want everyone just to stand up for a second. And if I wasn't holding a microphone, we would be doing burpees, but since I am, we won't do that. Uh, reach up to the sky, take a nice deep breath in. shoulder rolls and then one of my exercises it's kind of hard to do this at the back problem hands up to the side like that and then pin your shoulder blades back take your hands or the back of your hands towards your ears and then put your elbows in your back pocket put your hands down now don't move <laughs> you guys can have a seat now <laughs> feels so much better hey eh? So first of all, I really want to give a big shout out to 360 Fitness and all the partners here for putting out this event. I am absolutely thrilled to be here and super, super impressed and um, really a big shout out to you guys out here in the audience for taking the time, making the investment, the commitment um, to come here and really to get, um, you know, to get the most out of this presentation and to your commitment to becoming a healthier, more fit version of yourself. So, don't step on the scale, I'll make you cry. So essentially, in my business, I work with two types of people. Now, I have, as a woman, I should say, I have the woman who's usually about, up to, about, let's say, 40, and all she really wants is to know what to do so she can look like this on her next vacation to Mexico. The other kind of person I work with is usually 40 plus and what she wants to know is what's the bare minimum she has to do in her day so that she can still do that <laughs> i know you <laughs> i can pinpoint you on the audience but seriously my clients come to me because they want three things they want more energy They want to be, yeah, three things. They want more energy, they want to be healthy, and they want to feel good. So who am I? This is kind of hard to, anyways, I'll try my best. I'm a supportive fitness coach, entrepreneur. Once I get to know you, I will be your number one fan and the one who's relentlessly focused on helping you live vibrantly. That means a full, energetic life in a body that you love. I help people live happier, healthier life, and for many people that includes overcoming unwanted food habits, food obsession, body weight, um, and the on-again, off-again diet cycle, so people can start to take all that wasted energy that they expend on, like, on self-image, on that on-again, off-again, and really start to live life. I'm also, like Jack mentioned, I just started a, the uh, Fit and Vibrant You podcast this year. Episode 12 just came out. And that, for me, that was a pretty big deal. So I would love for you guys to check it out. 
And when I'm not working, I spend a lot of time with these fine folks. That's my husband, Keith, my son, Jacob, and my black dog named Red. And my son's birthday is on Monday. He's turning six, so pretty excited about that. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We have two different motivations for change. We either want to get away from pain, or we want to move towards something pleasurable. So for most people, when it comes to health and fitness, it's because we want to get away from pain. It's something that's really nagging at us. Uh, sometimes I call it the aha moment. That's when you go to your doctor, and your doctor says, you know what, you're borderline type 2 diabetic. Or, all of a sudden, you cannot no longer fit into your, quote, fat pants, and you refuse to go by the next side up. You feel lethargic. You feel... Uh, you wake up with aches and pains, and something is really nagging at you that you're like, I gotta change now. So what do we do? We're just like, all right, I'm gonna get in better shape, I'm gonna commit to a diet plan, I'm gonna work out every day. And you do that for a while, and it feels so good. You start to get some results, you feel good, you feel energetic, you're starting to, you're starting to feel good. But then we slip a little bit. And this could be, I had this conversation just this week with my client, it was a hot dog. She had a hot dog one night and that hot dog just snowballed into something else. Um, or maybe you miss a workout, or maybe something just goes a little bit off, or you, don't see the, or you don't get results as fast as you think you should. Maybe you wanted to lose 10 pounds in the next month or two, and you didn't quite get there. So then you slip a little bit, and then eventually you go down that roller coaster, and you give up, and you start to feel like a failure. And then what do we do? We just throw everything out the window because we're going to start again on Monday, right? <laughs> so, the, so the hot dog becomes the cheesecake and it becomes, it goes, it spirals that way. And then we feel awful and we eventually, the cycle could be short or it could be long. Sometimes it could be months, sometimes it could be just a couple days, and this could be just a night. And then we get back on and we try it again. Has anyone ever experienced this? Kind of on again, off again? <laughs> yeah, me too. So what I'm going to talk about today is getting off the fitness, the diet roller coaster, and making a giant leap forward in life. So there's five tips I'm going to go through, and at the end, of course, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to ask you, or answer, the, not ask you, answer you. So tip number one is to find your why, and Brooke did a really good job about, about this. And because it's finding why you actually want what you want. Because so often people will come to me for the first time and they'll say, what do you want? Uh, I want to lose weight. And it's like, no, like when you start to dive deeper, it's because I want to feel more confident. I want to feel more energetic. I want to be healthier. I want to be, I want to live my life. Like those are strong reasons why. It's not just because you want to see a number on the scale drop five pounds. That has nothing to do with it. It's what, honestly, that weight loss brings you, and that's what you want to focus on. This is one of my clients, um, Wendy, and we did a 12-week nutrition program in the spring, and she just crushed it. She's lost, I think now, about 40 pounds, and did, I'm actually from Chilliwack, British Columbia, and we have mountains out there, so I can't hear them, like, where are they? But um, there's this really big mountain uh, close to my house, and she did that one for the first time, and it's a pretty big feat, so she's really good and awesome. And, it's not enough just to know your why or just to write it down, but you have to remind yourself of your why regularly. And that's something that Wendy has done daily. So what she does is she takes her why, she writes down like why she wants what her want, what, why she wants what she is working towards or her personal mission statement, and she's actually pasted it on her bathroom mirror so that every time she brushes her teeth in the morning, she is reminded of why she's doing what she's doing. Because when we start a fitness program and a health program, we're all like, yes, it's gonna be awesome, it's feel good, I can go on this diet plan, it's gonna be fantastic. But we need to have lifelong motivation and constantly reminding yourself why you're doing what you're doing is absolutely key. So finding your why, going deep in finding your why, so asking yourself at least five times why you want what you want and there could be things like, you know, I want to look hot in my bikini in Mexico and those things like that. But those emotional triggers that really, really drive you forward, those are the ones that you want to focus on. So tip, num 
food. In your handouts, it says ditching smart goals. I'll I kind of change this a little bit, but it's to focus on process and action goals. So, so often we say, okay, I'm going to lose again that 10 pounds in the next month. Because when we look at goals, we always think about smart goals. They're specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, they're relevant, they're time bound. And some of the very few things that we can actually measure in terms of results ends up being weight loss, body fat percentage, um, even inches, and sometimes we cannot control those. We cannot always control what the scale is gonna say. We cannot control how our body responds to a fat loss program. We have so many other things going on with us that we that is completely out of our control. So an example here, anybody golf a little bit? Yeah, me too. <laughs> but I'm kind of competitive and I'm kind of an athletic. So last year I decided I wanted to take up golfing because my husband likes to golf a little bit and I thought it would be something kind of fun for us to do together. So because I'm competitive and a little bit an athletic, I thought oh, this is going to be easy, right? So I go up and I hit the ball and it goes about, I'd say about that far off the tee. And I was really frustrated. I probably gave up there. And I had an awful round. So then I took decided that we started to get some coaching. So I took a lesson and my golf coach, she said, you know what, Tanya, you gotta just work on your hip rotation and your follow through. That's it right now. So the next week I went out and played another round of golf and that's all I focused on was my hip rotation and I focused my follow through. And because I focused on things that I could control, like process things, it didn't really matter where the ball went what the result was for my actual, um, like after I swung the, uh, swung the golf club, I felt successful and I felt motivated and I felt excited because I was taking action on things that I could control. So my coach knew that by working on these things, eventually the ball is gonna go in the right direction, eventually with some more tweaks, and that's what a coach is there for. But Get your focus away from, I need to lose this 10 pounds, or I need to lose this 20 pounds, or I need to drop my body fat percentage, and focus on the action steps. So another example is this is my client, Lorraine. And we did a 21 day challenge, and uh, 360 also does these awesome 21 day challenges. And we, this was actually last November, and she crushed it. Like that first week, she did everything. We had all these different challenges, like uh, we looked at making sure you have protein at each meal, and she upped her workouts, and she uh, cut out sugar for that week, and she felt good, she felt really good. And we did weekly weigh-ins. And that night, she did her weigh-in, she stepped on the scale, and she lost 0.2 of a pound. And she was devastated. And actually, she kind of, I think she, I'm pretty sure she cried. I cried for her, I think. And I thought this was so sad because she was doing all these amazing things. She was feeling better. She was committing to her workout. She was eating healthier. She was you know, doing her flexibility training. She was doing it all. And she didn't get the results that she wanted. And she was ready to give up. So we did a lot of talking and you know, it worked through this kind of thing. And the next week, I mean, she lost like eight pounds anyway the next week. So it, was, it all balanced out. But we get so frustrated sometimes because we don't see results as fast as we think we should, or we don't see results at all right away, and it completely undermines all the amazing things that you're doing. So for long-term success, focus on the things you control, focus on the action steps, focus on the things that you're doing to make yourself healthier, and the results will come. So commit to action, daily action, and results will eventually come. We cannot control how long it takes. We cannot control whether our body decides to hang on to a little bit of extra body fat that we really want to get rid of. We have genetics, we have lifestyle, we have lots of things going on with us, but we can control whether you decide to get up and show up to your workout. You can control whether you're gonna get up and drink your eight glasses of water or have protein at your meals or uh, take time for self-care and self-love. Those are the things that you can control. So get clear in your action items. Reread your why. Define what success looks like. So if you're looking at things like, I want to be healthier, I want to be more energetic, I want to feel better. What does that look like? What do healthy people do? 
And then pick one to three action items that you can actually do today to move you towards that long-term goal. Number two, don't be a hero. So Batman is a pretty kick-ass superhero, but he doesn't do it on his own. He has Robin. And every single superhero that's like, you know, in the Avengers and all those guys, like they have help and support. So this here is a picture of our, uh, they call it Spencer's posse. Spencer's the coach in the middle and that's his posse. And the lady in the pink, um, second from the left, her name is Melanie. And she was at, uh, during one of our nutrition uh, meetings, this was at, during our 12 week nutrition meeting in, um, in the spring. And she was really, really frustrated with herself because when she did small group and when she had these appointments and she had a coach and she had someone to stay accountable to, she showed up every single time. And Spencer would always ask me, you know, what did you do during like the, the week? And she'd have to answer that she did something because she knew she was, he was gonna be asking her. But then she decided to join our boot camp program, which is more of a kind of a drop-in type thing. You don't have to sign up for it, you just show up. And guess how many she went to? Zero. <laughs> yeah, Jack knows, we know this. And she was so mad at herself. She's like, why is it that I can be accountable to, you know, to Spencer and to other people, but I'm not accountable to myself? So we flipped this because we started looking at things like Venus, Serena? <laughs> Anyways, high performance athletes, they have coaches, they have dietitians, they have a medical team, they have people working on their travel schedule, they have psychologists, they have a whole team of people working for them because they value and they know that they're gonna get to a, better, a higher level of success with having coaches. So it's not a failure, it's not that you cannot be accountable to yourself or that you need help. All it's saying is that you value your health and fitness enough, that you're gonna make it a priority, that you're gonna invest your time, your money, whatever it's gonna to be, to finding someone to keep, your, to keep accountable to. I know what the people, I've talked to a lot of people here today, a lot of you guys are already clients of 360 Fitness, and that's the reason why you're successful, because you have to show up because you have a coach waiting for you. I have a coach and I have experienced a level of success that I've never ever experienced if I didn't have a coach. So it's just switching that mindset of needing to do it on your own to realizing that if you value and are committed to your health and fitness, you will find support and accountability. So to take action on this one is to create, just simply create a list of your support team and then actually make a plan to reach out to those people on a regular basis. All right, moving on to number four. So number four is redefining success or redefining failure is another way to say it. So yeah, this is exactly two kilometers from my house. It's pretty amazing. You guys should come out to Chilliwack at some point. It's a pretty cool place to be. Anyways, this summer I decided I was gonna learn how to paddleboard. Has anybody tried paddleboarding before? Did anybody get on it and like be awesome right at the very get-go? No. Yeah? Okay, well, you're a rare exception. <laughs> Who fell off? Okay, so most of us, anyway. So here's the thing. I took up paddleboarding and I had no expectations that I was gonna be awesome at it right away. I fell, I, but I practiced and I got better every single time and I didn't get hard on myself every time I, I fell off or because I wasn't perfect right away. Yet when it comes to healthy eating and diet and uh, sitting to an exercise program and all these healthy habits, we have this weird expectation that we're gonna be perfect all the time. And if we don't be, if we're not perfect, if we have that, like that hot dog or that piece of cake that wasn't on our meal or uh, we have a really stressful day at work and we come home and we happen to just fall face first into a jar of peanut butter, we think we're a failure and we give up or we feel bad about ourselves. So why is it that you can take up something like paddleboarding or golf or play the piano or learn a new language and you're expecting that you're gonna have kind of ups and downs and you're gonna learn, but when it comes to 
fitness and nutrition and healthy lifestyle habits, we expect that we have to be on all the time. And it's this perfectionist mentality that can really, really be detrimental. So your past mistakes do not define you. All they do is guide you. And the other one I want to say is that is re-looking at failure. So if you do slip up or if you do get off plan for a little while or whatever it's going to be, all it is is an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to learn more about yourself. The way we present ourselves as eaters, the way we, our relationship with food really does open a pathway to learning a lot more about ourselves and it's just a really a great opportunity to learn. So you cannot fail unless you choose to fail. When you decide that I'm gonna completely stop trying, then that's failure. But everything else is simply learning another way that doesn't work, and that's all it is. So it's not saying that I messed up and start berating yourself, start feeling bad about yourself, start punishing yourself, punishing yourself either by overeating or by going to the gym and burning extra calories to like, you know, pay, um, you know, to uh, pay for what you did, but it's just realizing all it is is a finding a way that doesn't work. And this is another quote that I really like and I want to end off here, is that great is the enemy of good. A lot of us, when it comes to health and fitness, we do have this perfectionist mentality, or I'm going to start um, my exercise plan when my kids are back in school and my, you know, and Venus is at this right over here, and the temperature is 13 degrees, 0.5 Celsius, and all these kind of things. So we expect that all these things have to be perfect in order for us to start something, or because we can't do everything perfect, we may as well do anything at all. Great is the enemy of good. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to do the best as we can when we can with what we have. Got it so far? All right, so taking action when you get yourself off track, when you feel like you're getting off track or you're having one of those blah days, is to one is to give yourself credit for all the positive things we do. Because we have this really great ability to focus on the negative. Start focusing on all the positive changes that you are making. Revisit your why, this is a recurring theme. And then ask yourself, what is one thing I could do right now to move me forward? And this is kind of good too, because because I. It, who drove here today? I guess most people drove here. If you, let's say you were driving here and you ran a red light. Would you say, oh, I ran that red light. I'm just gonna run every red light, every stop sign until I get here. <laughs> no? No, didn't think so. You get back on track and the next light, you stop. The next stop sign, you stop. So when it comes to health and fitness, if you happen to get off track a little bit, it's not a big deal. But just like that red light that you blew past, don't keep blowing past every other red light. Just stop, recalibrate, and ask yourself, what's one thing I could do right now to move myself forward? This positive action is gonna create more positive action. All right, number five. And this is keeping inspired for life. So these are those, I call it the icing on the metaphorical cake, because we can actually have cake. The part is, are we having cake for dessert? For dessert? Maybe. Maybe after our, our uh... So I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I do personally, I help with my clients do as well, to really help like, take a leap forward in life and stay inspired and stay motivated for life. So number one, and I'm just gonna go through these ones. You can choose which ones resonate with you and which ones you think that are gonna be helpful for you. So the first one is doing affirmations, and these are just training your body or training yourself to talk good about yourself. Uh, one of the questions in the handout this morning was about, um, about self-talk, about things like whether it was positive or ne negative things you said about yourself. And you actually have to train yourself sometimes to start to say positive things. But when you start to think positively, you say positive thoughts, it actually changes your entire chemistry in your body and it changes your belief system about you, yourself. And that's gonna translate into the actions you take. So things like, I no longer judge or criticize myself. I am free to love who I am. One of mine says, I am strong, beautiful, and healthy. I say that myself daily and now my son says it too, about himself. So it's 
things that you can say on a regular basis that just helped to create that strong belief system about who you are. Number two is I have a coach. So that's actually me coaching in a photo shoot that we did, but is having a coach to keep me accountable, to keep me on track to the things that I said I was going to do. A coach's role is to keep the goal the goal and to keep yourself, keep your focused. I read or listen. So for me, a big part of my motivation, again, one that I help with my clients, is to keep inspired by license. We're knowledge sponges and we just keep learning. So I prefer audiobooks and podcasts, and I find just by listening to more of that same kind of, like, the things that I want to hear uh, in my day, and I take my, whether I'm driving or going for a walk, it really does help keep me motivated. And by the way, I highly recommend the Fit and Vibrant You podcast as well. <laughs> Journaling. And this is a big one. Um, that first client I talked about, Wendy Mater, um, she actually started journaling. It's made a huge difference in her life as well. And we talked about this morning about uh, mindset, journaling, and writing something that you're grateful for. Something that you're grateful for about your body as well, especially if you're dealing with a lot of that negative body image talk, self self hate. Um, writing down things that you're grateful for in life and things that you're grateful for your your body and your journey in your journal can really help. Defining success for the day. So writing down the things that are going to define success for the day. So one of mine personally is I usually write, I'm going to crush my workout because that gets me motivated and jacked up for my workout. But keep it to three things because when we have too many things and a list of things to do, then we just don't get them all done and we feel like a failure as well. At the end, reflect on the day's success. And that's a great opportunity to really focus on all the positive things that you are doing. And then what can be done differently? So what's one thing that I learned from my day and one thing I could improve on? And I also, and I have a blank kind of template for this one um, in your journal. And if you want the actual ones that I use, I'll give you the, uh, the link to that in a second. But I define my, for my deal week in four areas. Because the things that we do every single day defines who we are and defines our actual, like, it helps us to create habits. So I have four things. Um, I, my healthy body, so I define my, per, my week in terms of healthy body. So for example, one is I move my body with intent daily. So that's one thing that I'm working towards. Healthy mind, those are things like I, I express gratitude on a regular basis. Family love, things like I spent a good quality time with my son Jacob today because sometimes we focus so much on work or health, we forget about the things that also really, really matter to us, and that's our family. And then fantastic entrepreneur, so something that I focus on um, for building my own business as well. So focus on positive and action items. Uh, don't say things like... I think I'm, there we go. Don't say things like, I didn't eat sugar today. Say things like, I focus on real food. Keep it positive. And you don't remember, you don't need to be perfect. Don't make this into the next diet plan where you're like, oh, I'm, you know, I failed, I'm gonna stop doing it all together. If you want the exact habits I practice, um, and it actually says in, in, the, um, in your uh, handouts, it says tanyashaw.com slash women's health. Go to tanyashaw.com slash 360, that'll get you there instead. <laughs> and, or you can text 360 Fitness to 587-800-4323, and it'll be sent to your email as well. Pardon? That's awesome. I know. I was, that was my first time doing um, lead digits, so hopefully it works. I tested it myself. And then take action to keep some fire for life. So find out what works for you and commit. And then get the tool. So I'm going to end off with just a couple of quotes that really resonate with me. One is that knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is. So knowing all these stuff, all the stuff, having really good you know, being inspired and having all these great ideas is a step in the right direction, but you have to take action. So I'm a really, really, really big fan of action items on a daily basis. The next one is we often think we'll be healthy when we lose weight and instead focus on doing the things that make you healthy each day and the weight will take care of itself. So like I said, we cannot control what the scale says or what our body does all the time, but we can control the things that we use to make us actually healthy. And finally, remember that the day-to-day -day moments is the journey.
and enjoy them. And that's it. Hi, um, I was just thinking back to the one lady who, um, over the course of one week, did everything by the book, um, didn't lose any weight, and then the next week lost eight pounds. Is it so? Does it have something to do with the fact that her metabolism just hadn't fired up yet? Like it just took a little longer to get possible. Get going? Um, it, it's possible. It's. The thing is, is that our bodies, there's so much that goes on in our bodies in terms of weight loss, and we think that, I, I always like to look at um, health and fitness and weight loss, just it's like, you know, calorie, all like neat, and say like, you know, we gotta just follow this plan, and exercise like this, and the body's gonna all look like, but things don't happen like that. So sometimes it, it, it can be hormonal, um, it can be genetics, it could be lots of things are going on. Sometimes people have problems with their thyroid, um, adrenal fatigue, so many things go on. And then we also have emotions and we have life and we have, you know, there's so much that goes on. So why, I'm not sure. But uh, the big point there was really just that we need to focus on the positive action steps that we're doing and use that as a measure of, measure of success, more so than simply always just focusing on effort. So, losing it here. Um, like Brooke said too, and she's had clients who's lost two pounds and a whole bunch of inches. I'll just talk loud, how about that? <laughs> so some people um, will, you know, will change their body, but because now we're building muscle mass and we're um, doing other things. Does that work? Oh, that work works. Um, the scale doesn't change too, so. And it just can be so frustrating sometimes when, when that's all we focus on. Like I'll have clients who they don't lose as much as they want to and they undermine all the positive things that they are doing because they focus on that result. Remember, it's the long, long term that we're looking at. All right, that's it.